So hello everyone and today we are going to discuss a problem that had come in the AMC 8 and it's a really fun and really interesting problem. We are going to learn a little bit about averages, a little bit about algebra and how, how the knowledge of a little bit of algebra, some basic algebra can help us to solve problems that come in such Olympians. And this is going to be a really interesting problem, a really fun problem. If some of you who are preparing for um, Olympiads, maybe the AMC 8 or even other Olympiads, you all will enjoy this for sure. So let's begin. So this is the problem number 16 from the AMC 8 that had come in 2022. All right. And in this video, we have a question involving algebra and statistics. And like I mentioned, we're going to learn a little bit about averages, means, arithmetic means. Maybe you've heard these terms, maybe you've not, but don't worry. We're going to talk a little bit about them. And uh, I also came up with an interesting observation, which eventually led to an alternate solution for this given problem. Right. And at the very end, we have a similar but slightly challenging problem that I want you all guys to try out. And if you if you are able to solve it or if you make any progress on it, please let me know in the comment section below. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, computer science and informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for school and college students. All right, so let's continue with the problem. So here it is. So they've told us that we have four numbers written in a row, right? And the average of the first two is 21. The average of the middle two is 26. And the average of the final two, the average of the last two is 30. And they're asking us to find the average of the first and last numbers. So the way I would probably approach this is algebra comes first to my mind. And why? Because they've told us four numbers. So why not let those four numbers be A, B, C, and D, right? So let the four numbers be A, B, C, and D. And they've told us that the average of the first two is 21. Now, what is an average? So if I say the average of the first two numbers, that if I say average of any two numbers really, and the two numbers are, let's say X and Y, so the average would be X plus Y by two. That's essentially what an average means. Now, this average is also called as a mean, right? A mean. Okay. So average is just like the average, like you sum the quantities and you divide it by the number of quantities, right? So the mean of n terms would be the sum of n terms divided by n. That is typically what we mean by when we say a mean, right? And what is an arithmetic mean? And arithmetic mean is basically, again, arithmetic mean is nothing but the average. So if you talk about arithmetic mean of two numbers, X and Y, that would be X plus Y by two. Arithmetic mean of three numbers would be X plus Y by three. And arithmetic mean of N numbers would be the expression that I've written over here. Okay, great. So they have told us that the average of the first two numbers is 21, right? So, and we assume the first two numbers to be A and B. So that means we have a plus b by 2 is equal to 21. Okay, now let's work with other information that is given the question as well. The average of the middle two numbers is 26. So b plus c by 2 is 26. And the average of the last two that is c and d is 30. So you have three equations and I'm, if I multiply uh, on both sides, LHS and RHS by 2, we get something like this. a plus b is equal to 42 b plus c is equal to 26 times 2 is 52 and c plus d is 30 times 2 to 60 right so now we have these three equations and what do we need to find we need to find the average of the first and the last numbers so we need to find a plus d by 2 the first term was a the last term was d and then we need to find the average of the two terms right so now we have these three equations and we can really work with this and if I add all the three equations, I will get a plus d plus 2b plus 2c. And that can be simply written as 2b plus c. Right? And that is equal to 42 plus 52 plus 60. All right. That's great. Right. And if I divide on both sides by 2, right, what will I get? I'll get b plus c plus a plus d divided by 2, which is what we intend to find and let me let, let that equal to k is equal to 42 plus 52 plus 60 divided by 2 
which comes out to be 42 plus 52 is 94, 94 plus 60 is 154, and 154 divided by root is 77. That comes out to be 77. And if you notice, in the question, we had found out the value of b plus c over here, and b plus c is equal to 52. So that means k plus 52 is equal to 77. And if you subtract by 52 on both sides, you get k is equal to 77 minus 52. So therefore, k is equal to 25. Right? And I believe they had given us certain options as well. So yeah. So the average of the first and last numbers, that was a plus d divided by 2, which we assume to be k, is certainly 25. So option number b would be correct. Now, let's come on to a certain observation that we can make in order to maybe avoid all of this algebra. Now, all of this algebra is simple, I agree. A lot of you may feel this is very simple. A lot of you might find this is something new and that's perfectly fine. But what I, what, what we need to realize is there's probably a slightly more analytical solution to this given problem. And that this is something that we observe a lot of times in the AMC and even on the AIME that there is a brute force method and there is maybe a little bit simpler uh, an analytical solution involved, right? If we just observe this question over here, they had given us four numbers, right? We don't know what those four are, but they had given us the average of the first two, right? So the average of the first two numbers, so the average of the first two numbers uh, is 21, right? So average of number one and number two is 21, right? As it was given the question. Or in other words, I can just say that the sum of the two numbers, sum of the first and second numbers is 21 times 2, which is 42, right? And which we had seen over here as well, right? And they'd also given us that the sum of the last two terms, right? The average of the last two is 30. So if the average of the last two terms is 30, that means the sum of the last two terms, now term number three and term number four is 30 times two, which is 60, right? So we have the sum of first two terms, we have the sum of the third and fourth term. So what is sum of all four terms? If I write the sum of all four terms, that will be nothing but 40 plus 62, right? Sum of all four terms is what? First term plus second term plus third term plus fourth term. That is 42 plus 60, and that's one or two. That's excellent. Now, they had given us the sum of the middle terms, that is term number two and term number three, right? They had given us the average, the average was 26. So that means that the sum of the second and third term, the sum of the middle two terms is 26 times two, which is 52, right? So we have, we basically have like four numbers, right? Sum of all four, sum of all four is one or two. Sum of these middle quantities is 52, right? So what is the sum of the last two quantities? It would be nothing but 102 minus 52, right? So basically, the sum of first and last term is 102 minus 52, which is 50. So therefore, average of the first and last term is 50 by 2, which is 25. And this is the same answer that we had gotten before as well, right? So here we did not have to do a lot of algebra. It was just an observation that they had given us the sum of the first and second term and they had given us the sum of the third and the fourth term, right? And because they had given that, we could deduce the sum of the four terms. We can find out the average of the four terms as well. How would we find that? Well, we have four terms, the sum of them is one or two. So the average of the four terms would be one or two divided by four, which comes out to be 25.5. But that aside, they had given us the sum of the first two terms, they had given us the sum of the last two terms. Using that data, we found out the sum of all four terms. And it also given us the sum of the middle two terms. So using that, we just found out the sum of the first term and last term, and we divided that by two to get our average. I was asked in the question. So that was a slightly logical and analytical solution to it without involving a lot of algebra. So you can do it that way as well. And now after that, I have a really nice problem for you. It's a little bit challenging, I know, and that is why I'm going to give you a hint for it. Okay. So let's see what they're asking. We have two numbers, two consecutive numbers, so one, two, three, till n are removed, right? Now the arithmetic mean of the remaining numbers is 105 by four. What are the removed numbers? Now I mentioned arithmetic mean in brief uh, in this video. So if you, if you remember that, you can try this out. 
but let me give you a hint right so let me give you the starting case like where do you start right so two consecutive numbers from this are removed right and the arithmetic mean what is the arithmetic mean it's nothing but the sum right so let the removed numbers be k and k plus one right so one zero five by four would be nothing but one plus two plus three plus four till n right and then you remove this k and k plus one do you agree with me and then you divide them by n minus two why would this be n minus two well you see you are removing two numbers from one two three till n right so these are n quantities and when two are removed you have n minus two terms correct so the mean would be divided by n minus two that's that's kind of the approach that you would have to take also one more thing one more hint i'll give it to you one plus two plus three plus four till n we represent this as sigma n and that is equal to n into n plus one by two right all right then so i really hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed the problem and if you make any progress on this question if you are able to solve it please let me know in the comment section and i'll respond there for sure till then thank you very much bye bye Chinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics and they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR, and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.